everybody and welcome back to Lima. Today we come to the historic center of the capital city of Peru and it's going to be quite interesting to compare the historic center to the previous two districts that we've been to, Miraflores and Barranco. Those districts were very like trendy, kind of modern and you really could have been in any city anywhere in the world. Whereas here we're expecting it to be a lot older, a bit more of a colonial feel, a bit like the city centers in Mexico City and Guadalajara. Let's get into it and check out the historic center of Lima. So if you're like us and the majority of tourists and you're staying in Miraflores or Barranco district then the fastest and easiest way to get to the historic centre is by hopping on the Metropolitano bus service which runs in its own designated bus lane. Buses run every 5 to 10 minutes and you'll want to get off at Tacion Central which is the best place to start your tour around the historic centre. So Lima's historic center was actually declared a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1988. Our first stop is here at the Plaza de Armas, which you can see just behind me. Unfortunately, the square is closed today. Apparently there's a big demonstration gonna happen. Obviously on the one day that we come to check it out, it's closed, but it does mean we get some pretty cool shots of it without any people in. So there is some benefit to it being closed off. This plaza is considered to be the birthplace of Lima and is located right on the spot where the conquistador Francisco Pizarro founded the city in 1535. And you can definitely appreciate that colonial feeling here, like in the Barranco and Miraflores district you could be, you know, in any city in the world, whereas here you know you're definitely nowhere else but in Latin America. location around the historic center is just behind me which is called the Basilica and Convent of San Francisco and it's only a short walk from the main plaza of Las Villamas. It's a beautiful building, it's what lies underneath that draws tourists to it. Lying underground under this building is a network of catacombs that are really extensive and were used in the colonial times and all the way up until about 1810 as the old cemetery for the city. So there's estimated to be around 25,000 bodies buried under this church. This will be our first proper time exploring a catacomb so we're very excited but also a little bit apprehensive at the same time. that tour around the catacombs and it was a very unique tour it's 15 souls per person for the tour and you get a guide as well who will tell you all about it it was in spanish which we didn't understand no. much of it however they have signs in english as well but it's quite hard to read it all because it's going a bit fast but the building itself inside was beautiful the paintings were amazing the only thing that you cannot take any photos or videos unfortunately however there was only one spot before you think we're sneaky we not we obey the rules and there was only one spot where our tour guide allowed us to take photos so we took a quick video and some photos of it which will insert here i think this is a place that you just have to see yourself take pictures with your own pair of eyes This afternoon hasn't really gone to plan. We initially wanted to leave the historic center and show you a trio of different parks make up like a triangle underneath the center of the city. Unfortunately, these parks now are being converted to vaccine centers. They operate in the car park, but then they close the rest of the park off. We couldn't visit two out of the three. So the first one is the exhibition park and it's full of museums, including the Museum of Art in Lima, which is probably the biggest and grandest in there. The second one is called El Campo de Marte, which is sort of like more geared towards recreation and sports. Definitely a cool place to go if you want to have a little bit of exercise, but also quite a few big monuments in there as well. The last one which is behind us and it is the only one that's open and operating, luckily. Yeah, because this is the one that we're most excited yes. about seeing and you'll see the reason why very soon.
the final park in the trio and the one where we are now is by far the coolest and it is called the Circuito Magico del Agua. So this park is basically a mixture between public park and the theme park. It's only because you actually have to pay an admission fee to enter but it's only about four souls which is less than a pound so that's really affordable for such a cool park. The park contains 13 cybernetic fountains which basically means they're water fountains that have been modified. They can display light and sound and music so they can create some really unique effects. So the best time to come to the park is towards the end of the day so you'll be able to walk around and see the fountains during the daylight but also they have shows on from about 6.30 onwards and you can see uh, all the fountains lit up playing all the music. As the sun began to set, the fountain started to glow a beautiful orange colour, and then as night came, the light show began. Then, every night from about 7pm at the Fountain of Fantasy, you can watch an amazing show of water, music and light. It is definitely a sight you should not miss when visiting Lima. Overall, Lima's historic center is well worth a visit and you should definitely add it to Miraflores and Barranco as a district you must visit when staying in the city. We hope you've enjoyed our videos from Lima and we can't wait to start sharing our journey through Peru with you all.